Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Today I'm really excited to be sharing with you a little bit about teaching ukulele. I'll admit, don't know what I'm doing, so <laughs> I'm just sharing my best guess and what I think um, my, works for my classroom so far and some things that I've sort of uh, picked up along the way. So what you're getting today is is my best guess at how to, to teach ukulele so far and some of the things that have helped me and, and things I've gotten from folks. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about um, using bulletin boards. Um, for advocacy, that's something I shared about with uh, Missouri Music Educators um, a week or so ago, and um, I thought it'd be fun to share about that, so I'm gonna do that. But first, my Instagram Live video is switched around, not to my FaceTime camera, and um, I'm gonna switch this Facebook Live video around so that I can um, try and do this, I guess, backwards, um, so that you all can see um, not using my FaceTime camera, because if I use my FaceTime camera, then when I talk about ukulele, everything's gonna be backwards, and people are gonna say, why is this so weird? And so I'm <laughs> just gonna try and flip this around. And I'm trying to be like super millennial technology savvy, because I've got, <laughs> you can't see this, but I've got my laptop down here, and my iPad up there, and I'm trying to see if I can see, um, if I can just see how this is all working, so I can actually see the video I don't think I'm able to actually see. So if this cuts out, I'm so sorry. I can't, oh, oh, I can, I can sort of see the live video. This is so bizarre. I'm, I'm watching myself on Facebook while I'm talking to y'all. Anyway, this is so that I can um, show you sort of a, a direct view instead of you seeing, um, and you seeing the backwards view. Okay. I don't know if that makes any sense. And now it's talking. This is so weird. Okay. So anyway, sorry about that. I just, I, I flipped these screens around, so I hope that it keeps working. I don't know, I'll try and keep an eye on the live video to see if it's working. But just so that when I hold something up, it doesn't have the letters backwards or the words backwards or the ukulele backwards, because I know that's sort of really frustrating for people who watch. Um, so a couple things, um, there's so much to talk about today. Um, I wanna get a, a little bit of news out of the way. Um, I'm doing a giveaway with um, Prodigy's music lessons. You might notice preschool Prodigy's. Um, I'm really excited about it. This runs through Wednesday, um, and they're giving away a set of these amazing um, desk bells, and it comes looking like this, and inside are these amazing bells, um, and they're cool because they just sit on your desk, and they make this amazing, beautiful sound. They're boom whacker colors, if you're that sort of a color coded person. Um, and it's a whole diatonic set um, of an octave C to C. You will get that, and you get um, a Preschool Prodigies Volume 1 songbook, workbook, and, um, and also the workbook that goes along with it. And um, this is just a giveaway on my blog, along with uh, the Prodigies folks who are really wonderful and have a lot of cool resources. Um, and so, I mean, these are really cool. I, I'm already using them to get pitches, to do ear training, to do... Um, simple little melodies, the kids are like enthralled by them, and I'm gonna put them in centers, that's my hope. So um, anyway, there's a giveaway on my blog for a free set, so go and enter, that runs through Wednesday, and the winner's announced Friday. But thought I would mention that before I jumped into anything else because I didn't wanna forget, because I knew I'd forget. <laughs> well, I talked at um, Missouri Music Educators a couple weeks ago about advocacy, um, because Music in Our Schools Month is coming up, and you know it's really hard for music teachers to advocate for what we do, and um, to, I mean, it's just hard for us to um, put, put the word out there and get people interested in what we're doing. And so one of the things I talked about is there are, there are a lot of different ways to advocate for what you do and to inform people about what you do. And um, this month is Black History Month. Next month is Women's History Month. Um, there are a lot of cool months that are themed like that, and I think it's really great to take advantage of that. And one of the easiest ways to do that is with your bulletin board. And um, you know, your bulletin board speaks for you even when you are not around. And so um, I wanted to show you just a couple different bulletin boards that I use for advocacy um, throughout the year. Um, this first one is honestly one of the oldest sets that I ever made. Um, it's called, I think it's called Thoughts on Music, um, Quotes by Famous Folks. So it's really just famous quotes that are put over, um, so images of 
like a microphone or guitars or things like that. And they have quotes like, people haven't always been there for me, but music always has. Taylor Swift. Kids love that quote. Um, music has healing power. It has the ability to take people out of themselves for a few hours. Elton John. So these are just cool quotes um, from famous people. And you'd just be blown away by the amount of people who stop and read them because they really like these artists and they like the pictures and they like just taking a second to sort of reflect on those quotes. So those that's just an easy, super wonderful advocacy set you can use any time throughout the year. Um, and so that's just a general one that I like to have available and I have that printed out and ready to go. So anytime I don't have something seasonal out of my bulletin board, I don't have something um, that is specific to that certain time of year, I put those out because they're great filler and they are always good no matter what time of year it is. Um, the one poster set that I put up for Black History Month, and I have the mini posters here, but um, I printed out this, it's, I call it um, the best of the best, but on, on my TPT store, um, it's called like 25 Famous Black Musicians, uh, or you can search Black History Month, but it has um, all of these different profiles of famous African-American musicians. So like Aretha Franklin and uh, James Brown and Louis Armstrong and Bob Marley, uh, Duke Ellington, uh, Billie Holiday. There are even people in here like Whitney Houston. I'm trying to find, I know Beyonce's in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, here she is, gosh, on the next set. Um, but these are just more recent profiles and they have a little bit about the artist or the composer or whoever it is um, has their nickname and then uh, name and when they're born or birth and death dates if they have those, if they're not still living. Um, and I like to put that out for Black History Month. I printed them in a smaller size. It's like two to a page so that I could get all 25 profiles out on a smaller bulletin board, but you could print them full size. Um, the reason I like putting these out is that it includes um, black musicians from throughout history. So uh, going back to like Scott Joplin and going through, um, you know, jazz artists and R&B artists all the way up to current artists. Um, it has just a variety of profiles and names and it gets people thinking about how those musicians have shaped music and shaped America. And so I, I think it's super cool to have this. And then um, along with that, I have um, this little thing that, that explains, this month we celebrate these musical legends who have been leaders in their fields. They're guitarists, opera singers, pop stars, jazz musicians. It basically just gives a little bit of framing about why I put those profiles out there. Kids aren't gonna read this, they won't care, but administrators will and parents do. And so this is sort of a fun thing to add and to put in with the rest. And then I have just a header that says best of the best. And it was hard to limit to 25 different um, musician profiles, but um, you know, I, I just sort of cut down to 25 because if you do any more than that, I mean, you could go on forever and um, I mean, you have to have a ginormous bulletin board. <laughs> anyway, that's what I put out in um, February. And then I wanted to show you the one that I already have printed out and ready to go for March um, because March is Women's History Month. And um, I made this set a couple of years ago and I'm, I call it Divas um, and it's Influential Female Music Makers. And so this is basically the same idea um, where it's, you know, the profile of the person and a photo and a little bit about their life. Um, and I broke this up, I think this was maybe 50 profiles. And so I broke it up so that I have already set to go. And for four weeks, I have week one, week two, week three, week four, and sort of little packets. And I, I switch them out every Friday afternoon. Um, so this is just, you know, famous singers, um, musicians, um, guitarists, writers, um, actresses, um, just all different sorts of women who have influenced um, music and what we do. And so I think it's, it's just sort of cool to, um, to focus on the women because so often on our you know, classroom walls, we have these old dead white dudes who, you know, Beethoven and Bach and Vivaldi, and not to say that they didn't do a lot for music history, but if that's the only thing that we talk about, if those are the only types of profile that we talk about, we are missing a huge swath and all of the young girls who walk through our hallways, if they don't see examples and images of what they could do, um, they won't feel the same connection. And so I try, I try to really focus on, um, on all different profiles and that's why I like switching them week by week so that um, you can get all those different views of opera singers and Broadway singers and pop stars and guitarists and um, you know, Com conductors, 
Um, Nadia Boulanger is in the set. I mean, there are just a lot of different profiles. And again, it, it's not just for the kids, it's for the kids, it's for the administrators, it's for the other teachers, it's for parents, it's for anybody who walks through your room because you want them to be able to um, see that you care about not just the singing and the playing in your classroom, but also uh, music making in general and the greater music world. So th those are a couple different sets, but I would just encourage you to think in the next week, you know, how can my bulletin board speak for me when I'm not there? Because you never know, you know, a visiting basketball tournament in your school or a church uses the room down the hall or, you know, parent-teacher conferences or something where you're not around. It's nice to have um, advocacy going on even when you yourself are not there to advocate. And your bulletin boards can do that. So these are just a couple sets that you could do, but you could do anything. And I've seen some really, really beautiful uh, Black History Month uh, musician bulletin boards. Um, uh, Mrs. Wonderly Makes Music has an amazing set right now. You should go and see what she created. But there are a lot of things you can do. Just think about as you're you know, going forward, what is it that you might do um, to, to make music advocacy happen all year long through the use of your bulletin boards. Okay, so um, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you weren't really here for that, if you just tuned in, um, I'm gonna just share a little bit about how I'm teaching ukulele right now. I don't know if it's right. It's probably not. It's my first year teaching ukulele. I've never had a class set before. Um, and so some of the things that I'm trying, I'm trying. And very possibly some of them I would not do next year. And so um, I would really, really value your comments and questions as we go along. Uh, because the cameras and things are flipped, I can't actually see your questions in real time. So at the end of the video, I'll turn the screen around and scroll through to see what your questions and comments are. But as always, it's cool to see when other teachers comment on things and and so we can collaborate together. So if you see a comment pop up on Facebook or Instagram, feel free to answer that if you feel like you have a good answer or if you also have that question. Um, it's nice to be able to have um, a chance to really connect even though we're all in different places. It's nice to feel like this is, can be a community where we can talk about things. Um, so first, let me just talk about some things that I've been doing with ukulele in the last year because I really got my um, class ukulele set last spring and um, I did a grant through my local education foundation. Um, so sorry if you're like, what grant did you use? Well, unless you teach Cherokee County, <laughs> you can't use the same one I did. But um, if you're interested in the process or the things that I wrote down, send me an email at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com and I can send you some of the information I used or some of the... Um, the blurb or whatever that I had to put in the grant document. Um, I got all of my ukuleles through West Music. I got a really wonderful quote from them. I went to them and said, I have gonna have about this much money, I hope, if the grant is fulfilled, can you give me a quote? And they gave me a really, really wonderful quote. And more than that, they gave me guidance. There were things that I didn't think that I would need and things that I thought I would need that they were like, no, maybe this instead. So it was really great guidance helping me know what to get. Um, but that's a, a topic for a whole nother video. Um, I, all that to say, I didn't have ukuleles until really this year. And so I've been using a ukulele for the past few years. And I want to show you some things that you might use if you don't have a class set, uh, but you want to get a ukulele for yourself. Here's some things that you might like. Um, so if I, I would say if you're going to get one ukulele to use for yourself to accompany students um, or to use in your classroom, I think that's a great idea. Um, I got one ukulele about a year and a half or two years ago, and I use it all the time. Um, it's super portable, super easy. It's easy, easy to play. If you tried playing guitar, or had to do guitar class in college, like guitar methods, and you're like, I hate it, I'm never playing a string instrument, get a ukulele because they're really easy to play. Um, I took it with me to North Carolina Music Educators last year when I presented there. Um, and I had it in my bag on the way to North Carolina and I was like, I'm going to play it for my sessions. And this kid, and by kid, I mean, he was a college kid, but for me, like he's a kid. Um, this kid came up to me and was like, Hey, cool uke. And I was like, Oh, thanks. And he was like, I mean, it was in the bag. Like he didn't even know what, what it was. It could have been, I don't know, could have been full of chocolate, but anyway, so he's like, cool you, can I see it? And I was like, sure. He's like, what kind? And I was like, Soprano. He's like, you know what brand? I was like, oh, it's a Kala. <laughs> and he's like, oh, can I play? And he like did like a virtuoso. And I was like, please don't ask me to play. He he did though. He's like, do you want to play? I was like, 
oh no thanks, that's okay, I'll play later. I didn't wanna say like, I only know three chords. <laughs> but really, that's the beauty of the ukulele. You only have to know three or four chords to play virtually any song you're gonna accompany students with. Um, and you'll sound great and your students will love it. So don't feel intimidated, get a uke. They're not super expensive, they're worth it. Um, so a couple things that I would suggest getting, um, I would say get a uke that you know you're gonna like. Um, Kala is a great brand. Luna is a good brand. Um, I, those are both brands that I know, that I have friends who have them. Um, try them out. Um, this this Kala is, um, it's it was about, I think maybe six, 70 or $80, um, this is a Soprano, and you can get other Kalas. Um, the the Makala brand is what my students use, and this is sort of their bargain brand, sort of, um, and we have them in all different colors. Um, but the, the one I got for myself, the first one was a Kala, and I love it, I think it's great. Um, you wanna do things to protect it and take care of it. So when I traveled, um, there are a lot of really cheap and they're ch by cheap, I mean they are both inexpensive and not super great quality uh, bags. Um, for instance, the Macala gig bag. Oh, if I can pull it out. I would not use this if I were traveling because it is like just a drawstring bag. <laughs> so um, I spent a little money and I invested and I bought this bag, which I'm absolutely in love with. It's called, it's a Giggy, G-I-G-Y. Um, brand bag and you can find I put a link in the video notes um, for Giggy but um, the cool thing about it is it is handmade it's the story behind it is so cool um, this girl went to her mom and said mom how can I start saving for college um, before I get there and mom was like oh, I don't know and they came up with they created their own brand and they started making guitar bags ukulele bags uh, drumstick bags and they're all handmade in Philadelphia. It's this mom and daughter, and um, they're really super high quality. And like, I mean, this this went through Delta baggage, and it was fine. <laughs> um, anyway, they're super nice quality. What's really cool is you can get a bunch of different colors, and then this comes off. Um, you can get any print or style you want, um, and it's it's just super duper cool and like the nicest bag in the world. So I put a link to that. Um, but it is like super padded as well. So it's great for getting to and from school. I took it through a couple airports. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it has been great for me. Um, has a little strap here, a strap on the back. So um, super nice quality and that's a giggy bag and they make those for ukuleles or guitars or whatever. Um, and like I said, I put a link to that in the, the video recap page on my blog. I would also say get a strap and um, get a strap that you know is not gonna fall off and that you can wear anywhere. Um, this brand is called the Hug Strap and it's called that because it hugs the inside of your ukulele. So if you don't have an end pin where you can hook on a strap um, and you don't wanna do the like little, there's a kind that like hooks in the sound hole. This is great because it's super secure. It wraps around the ukulele. Um, it ties up here. It's very secure and it's easy to get on and off. It comes in like a bunch of different colors and styles um, and it's it's great. So I just know that anytime I go anywhere and I wanna use this with students, I can walk around and let go and it'll stay right there. Um, and it, it's super fun. This is just one color, but I have like, I have I think two more hug straps and there are about five more on their website that I want to get. But <laughs> um, anyway, this is great, a great setup for a teacher ukulele. Um, it's a really nice quality, it sounds great, it's easy to use. Um, so that's, I mean, I love my Kala, but I think you could probably get a Luna or some other ukulele if you want it and be great. Um, and one more thing you're gonna want is a tuner. And um, that's, you know, to keep the strings in tune, obviously. Um, everyone who I know who teaches ukulele says buy a snark. And um, I did, I bought a snark and it's great, I like it. However, I was also gifted this one, which is an Eno, and I like the Eno better. <laughs> um, and part of the reason is because, I mean, they both just clip on here, and you turn them on, and as you're tuning, there's a little sort of dial that shows you how close you are to the pitch, and you can adjust um, to get to the right, right pitch, right? So that's the snark. The, um, the thing I don't like is that it moves all the way around a lot. It swivels a lot, and so, you know, if I'm trying to tune all my ukuleles quickly, it's like I have to readjust on each each uke. Um, the Eno brand I really like because if, if I'm, you know, in between fifth grade and fourth grade, I'm trying to retune a couple ukuleles quickly. Um, the nice thing about this one, 
um, is, I don't know if you can really see it, but when, when you are on the pitch, it turns from blue to green, like the whole screen. So it's really easy to quickly be like, Ooh, yep, right, yep, right, yep, right. And, and I like this. Um, the clip is a, it's a little less loosey-goosey in here. Um, and it's a little bit easier for me to manipulate on and off and is, is really nice. There's the one thing about it is that if you, if you have it on, you press this button, it, it sort of switches modes. So you gotta make sure it's in the original mode for it to, to tune quickly and easily. But I have links to that if you want it. Um, and I think to the snark as well on my, my Amazon, um, wish list page. And I link to that in the notes. The one other thing that you might want to get is a, is a, a set of picks. Um, for ukuleles, most people use felt picks, um, and you can pay a lot for these or not a lot for these. Um, if you pay a lot for them, you get like three for like six dollars, and that's not good. Um, so I, I found a pack online that was like twelve for seven ninety nine or something, Amazon Prime, and I put a link to that. It's I've used the brand; it's a great brand. It's it's a stiff felt. Um, I think it's a three millimeter. Um, I did a whole thing on Instagram um, where I showed how I made my own out of felt, and these work really well too. There's what I'm going to use for kids. I've used them for a couple kids already, and they work great. But for me, I like having the the pick shaped, um, uh, the pick shaped pick <laughs> uh, made out of felt for the ukulele. I use it when I'm playing with kids, accompanying them. If I'm showing kids and teaching in class, I just use my thumb um, because that's what kids are using. So that's if you have a teacher uke and you just um, you know want ideas for just you as a teacher. So I'm gonna jump into how I'm teaching this with a large group and show you how I do it. But I wanted to show off these resources in case you're like, well, this is interesting, but I don't have a whole class set. I'm only gonna have one. Well, these are some great things that you might wanna get if you have just the one ukulele. Okay, cool. So I, I put links to all of those things. Um, on my uh, website, which is makemomentsmatter.org, and you can look up um, Musical Monday's recap, and that has all that information in there. Okay, so let me switch over and talk a little bit about my class set of ukuleles. Um, like I said, I got these through a grant, and um, they've been sitting, they, they took a while to tune, um, and one of the, there are a couple tricks, you can tune them up, all up a half step, all the strings a half step, so it sort of stretches out the strings, because the first several tunings, you're gonna have to just keep retuning them. Um, now they've sort of settled, so they're holding their pitch relatively well. That's one of the things about the Makala um, ukuleles is that they do hold their um, pitch pretty well, and so I don't have to do a ton of tuning every day, which is great. Um, I used to teach class guitar, and it was a pain in the butt to have to retune everything every time. And so this um, is nice that th because they're nylon and they once they finally stretched out, they um, get to the point where they don't have to tune so much. But the first couple times you can tune them up a half step and then they'll just naturally stretch out and sort of get closer to the real pitch. I also know people who have taken a pencil and uh, push it underneath the strings, so sort of pushing up the strings um, and leave it overnight and that stretches out the strings. Not too much, but enough that um, when you are going back to tune, you only have to really do it um, the one or two times. So those are a couple things about tuning, but it was a pain to tune them the first couple times, uh, but now we're past that, <laughs> which is great. Um, so when I first teach ukulele, I do um, a couple things before they actually get ukuleles in their hand to get them in the right place. And so uh, one of the things I do is I say, great, today we're gonna learn about ukulele. This is a ukulele. Ah, isn't that nice? And then I say, this is also a ukulele and this Again, I have links to this on Amazon. I got this one for about $45, I think. Um, it comes as a kiwi or a watermelon or um, a penguin or a pineapple, I think, with a prince. And it actually doesn't sound terrible. Um, I mean, for being sort of cheap and a fun novelty, um, it's not too bad. Um, Kala makes a version of this. And there's, I actually don't honestly like the print as well as this, and it's about double the price. So this was great that it worked out being a pretty good sound, um, and I'm sort of happy about that. Um, but I show them this version too, so they can see ukuleles look different. And then I show them um, my nicer version, my Kala, and I say, this is a, also a ukulele. And then I pull this out and say, this is not a ukulele. This is a guitar. And we spend about four or five minutes um, noticing 
comparing and contrasting the ukulele and the guitar. And part of that is because I want them to realize this is not a guitar. <laughs> but also I wanna just quickly, in, a, in about four minutes, talk about um, the ways that they are similar and they are different. Most of the kids will, um, will be able to spot that they're different sizes, right? Uh, most of the kids will spot that they are similar body types. They both have strings. They both have tuners. They both have the long neck. Um, and, and so we talk about those things. It's cool when kids notice, oh, this one has six strings, this one has four. Um, it's cool when they notice, oh, you know, everything's sort of scaled down. Um, one thing I really love when they do notice is that the guitar has um, a pick guard. And the reason I love pointing that out is, I say, you know, the pick guard, this black thing, is really here so that if you're strumming, like really going for it, and you strum and you hit the wood, you know, you can see, and my kids can actually see their little white streaks here. You can see that, you know, the pick, if you do that over and over again, and if the pick guard wasn't there, it would scratch up the wood. And if you had this guitar for 15 or 20 years, that would just eat through the wood. So they put the pick guard there so that you're guarding the guitar from the pick. And um, it's sort of like a bib for the guitar. That's what I love saying. And the kids are like, oh yeah, they, they sort of get that. And then I say, does, you know, does the ukulele have that? They say, no. And I say, yeah, it's because you don't really use a pick for the ukulele. And if you do use a pick, you usually use a soft pick that's not gonna scratch it up. And so that's why the guitar has a pick guard and the ukulele does not. And the kids are like, oh. But that's, this is one of the things that they notice and it gets them noticing more. If we spend these three or four minutes, they're a little bit more contemplative throughout the whole process, thinking about comparing, contrasting, and remembering from before and all of those sorts of things. So I like framing the lesson with this just so that they can get, um, they can get you know, in that mindset of sort of critical thinking and strategic thinking. By the way, this was my mom's guitar. Um, and when she passed away, I inherited it. But my mom was a K through 12 art teacher. And so in her honor, I got um, a strap, this Mondrian, and I love it. So anyway, thought I'd show that off. Um, okay, so once we get past talking about the ukulele, um, I, I pull up, I have on the screen, um, oh, you can't see it. Hello, my ukulele. Um, and I do a tiny little informational thing where I talk about the ukulele. We just go through our rules. I borrowed these rules from my friend Denise Wilkinson, who's amazing um, in Michigan, and she's really guided me and helped me along the way. Um, basically, it's just I'll take out and put away my ukulele carefully. I'll be positive. And the last one is we're going to strum and play in a variety of ways. Those are the three basic rules. And I love that she had that. This is just a zoom in to show them the head, the neck, and the body. And I say, you know, if the ukulele was a person, you'd have your body and your head and what connects your head to your body, your neck. And so they sort of remember that. Um, so we go through and talk about those really quickly. We talk about the tuning pegs and I, I do this every time with every class and I say, you know what, these tuning pegs, the ukulele has a great sound, but I had a kid the other day who got bored and so he just decided to start playing with the tuning pegs. time to play again, it sounded like this. Ugh. And the, the kids are like, oh, that is a huge difference. And so I said, you know, when you watch me, it only took me a couple seconds to retune things. But you know, if I have to do that with all the ukuleles, it's gonna slow us way down and we're gonna have less time playing. So just don't mess with the tuning pegs because now you know that if you mess with the tuning pegs, it's gonna change the sound. And I don't want you to sit here trying to play thinking that you have done something wrong when really it's the strings that are out of tune. Because if you change the tuning of the strings, you could be doing everything right here and everything right here but it would sound wrong. And I don't want you to feel like you're doing something wrong. So just leave the tuning pigs alone and we won't have that problem. And that, for the most part, solves that problem. And if there are kids who do mess with the tuners still, because some do, I say, remember what we talked about? And they're like, oh yeah. And that's, that sort of helps. Um, 
So we go through that, we talk about that, and then I say, all right, let's talk about your hands. And we hold up our hands and I say, okay, you've got four fingers. And the nice thing is in the United States, we count like this. We count one, two, three, four, and your thumb, but your thumb doesn't count. Um, and so you've got one, two, three, four. In other countries, they count one, two, three, four. That would be so hard to remember the finger numbers. But luckily we say, we are number one. We are number one. This is finger number one. And that's easy to remember. Two, three, four. Thumb doesn't count. And, th and that's how I sort of take them through their finger numbers. Oh, you can't see this, sorry. Um, this is just my right and left posters, which are a freebie on Teachers Pay Teachers. And I went in and I superimposed numbers on the fingers. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but that's there. And these the posters are free, and I just went in on PowerPoint and just put a little number over the top of each finger. And when it's blown up on the smart board, it's really easy for kids to see that. So we talk about that and I say, all right, time for a quiz. I say, put your first finger on your eyebrow. Put your second finger on your nose. Put your third finger on your lip. Put your fourth finger on your chin. Great, next hand. Put your first finger on your hairline, your second finger on your forehead, your third finger on your eyebrow. I say, great. Now I'm gonna, uh, hold on a second, I'm gonna go get my camera. And they're like, no! <laughs> um, actually, they're honestly usually like, no! They <laughs> leave their fingers there. Um, but I say, I'm not really gonna do that, but I'm, I just wanted you to do that so you know your finger numbers. Your finger numbers are so important. So show me fingers one, two, three, four. And I make sure that I never have them do finger two by itself because you know that's gonna go a bad place. Okay, so <laughs> uh, we run through finger numbers and then it's time to get our ukulele. So what I say to kids, um, the procedure in my class, all of my classes are broken into four different teams. We have the strings, percussion, woodwinds, and brass. I've talked about that before, um, but having each class at the beginning of the year, I put them in those four teams. I use that all year long. They line up with their family. They do games with their family, their team, um, and we use that that procedure all year long. So they all know I'm brass or I'm strings or I'm percussion or I'm woodwinds. They know that um, going into this lesson. So I say, well, the family of the week, you know, which depending on the day, it could be woodwinds, strings, brass, percussion, it just rotates every rotation. Um, the family of the week gets to get their instrument first. And when you come get your instrument, you're gonna take it off, holding the neck and holding the body. And then you're gonna walk anywhere you want. You don't have to go to your seating spots, seating spot spots. You can go anywhere you want in the room as long as you can see the smart board. And I say that because I, I want them to be able to sit with their friends if they want, um, or to not sit with their friends if they want. Because when you're playing, sometimes it really does help to have your friend go, no, like this. And sometimes I can go and do that, but if a kid goes, no, you put your finger here and then your finger right here, and oh good, if a kid does that, sometimes that's more effective than if I do that. So I let kids choose where they wanna sit, um, for this lesson, and maybe that'd work for you, maybe it wouldn't, um, but it's just sort of a, a special thing that, that I get to let them do, and, it, and, I, and their warning is, though, that if they're not, um, if they're not smart about it, if they don't um, respect that, and they do start goofing off, I'll just move them, um, but I let them choose, so they, uh, they go up by their, by family, so this week was Brass, Brass was the family of the week, so Brass went and took their ukulele, and they took it back to their spot, and inside of me, I have to like suppress the urge to shush because as they're walking back, they're like, Ooh, or as they sit down, they're like, oh, this is fun. And they start doing stuff, you know? And so I just sort of just try and relax and be cool about it. Um, so they get back to their spot. We get through all four teams. And one of the things that I say, I don't know if you can see this in the picture, but I have three of every color out on the ukulele cart. And so I have purples and blues and yellows and greens and all sorts of things. And I say, you know what? If you're like, I really want the yellow, I really want the yellow, I really want the yellow. And you get to the ukulele cart and there are no more yellow. Don't do this. No, never bleh. Don't do that because guess what? The blue sounds the same as the yellow. The orange sounds the same as the yellow. Actually, we don't have orange. The black sounds the same as the yellow. So even if you don't get your favorite color today, next time, if your family gets to go first, you will get to choose and you'll probably get the color you want. But even though, if you don't get the color you want, it'll still sound great. So just take a ukulele, take your second choice and go to your seat. So um, I don't know if you can see that, but there are a lot of different colors and they get to go choose and they go back to their seat. And that's when we start doing our things together. So um, I, for the first part, I mirror them and they don't, 
no a difference. So um, I say, great, hold the ukulele in your right hand. Good, and do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Great, say, this is my right hand. And they go, this is my right hand. I say, but this is the wrong hand. And I go, oh, but this is the wrong hand. It's my right hand, but it's the wrong hand. It's my right hand. That's it. Okay, good, now hold it in your left hand. <sighs> say, this is my left hand. This is my left hand. It's my right hand. It's my right hand, but it's not my right hand. It's, it's just a silly thing, but they they like thinking about that. They giggle a little bit, and we just sort of do that out inside, up and down, just so that they they know they're holding it here, and then they know that this is the hand that should be on the neck. So when they bring it over, um, they they have um, their right hand, which is their left hand, on the neck. I for some reason making that a joke works. For me, for my kids. I don't know if it works for you or not, but it works for me. So the first time I have them bring the ukulele over, I have them, um, we talk about the midline of the body, and I have them sort of bring the sound hole sort of close to the midline. They bring their hand around, um, and then we just work on strumming. And so when we start with strumming, I just have them hold their hand sort of out of the way, and we talk about strumming, and I say, show me a thumbs up. And they do a thumbs up. And, and I sort of teach strumming the first couple lessons as like, it has to be this way, when really it doesn't. But this is just to sort of get them, it's like you gotta know the rules to break them. This is just giving them a procedure to start so they're sort of all on the same page. And then later, if they wanna branch out and strum a different way, great. But the first time I have them do it like this, I say, show me a thumbs up. And I say, you strum with your thumb. And I say, you strum with your So then we try it and we do. And I say that when you strum, you wanna get all four strings every time you strum down. And so, um, they go all the way down. It's like, oh my gosh, that's so great. Let's try it together. And so we strum together, just a little bit going just down, just down strums. And one of the things I learned from Denise, uh, my friend in Michigan, is if you want them to stay together, um, grab a hand drum and um, you know tap the beat on the hand drum because that's a different timbre and they'll be able to hear that and match that better than if you're standing there with just a ukulele. So I usually bring out a hand drum and, and I tap that along with them. Um, so they sort of just strum together um, all at once. We do that for a little bit. Great, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And I say, stop. You know what, when you strum, usually guitar players strum right over the sound hole, but ukulele players usually strum a little higher. So in these first couple lessons, I say just aim for where the neck meets the body and sort of strum there. And that gets it sort of in a better position for them. I hope, I, <laughs> again, brand new. So if you're like, actually the ukulele should be right here, like please comment and give me better advice. But um, it sort of helps them bring their hand over. So we're strumming with our thumb. And I say, great, let's try the opposite. Instead of just strumming down, we're gonna strum up. So you're gonna strum like this. You're gonna use the back of your hand to strum. Your nail, if you have thumbs up, you know, you went down and you come right back, your nail is gonna come across the strings to get um, the strings on the way up. I have kids, I don't even know how they, they're like contortionists, but they like do this. I don't know how they feel like that's natural, but anyway, so that so they strum and then they strum up with their nail. We do just up and then we move to alternating. So we do down, up, down, up. We do that for a while. Um, and then, you know, I go around, I check on kids. I, I keep saying thumbs up, thumbs up, strum with your thumb because I get kids who try and hold the ukulele down here while they're strumming. And then that's just, especially for their hand, I mean, it's hard for my hand, my hand is stretching. It's hard for their hand to do that. Um, and, cause they're trying to hold the ukulele and I don't want them to do that. I want them to just worry about the strumming because this is, it's, I feel like it's a, weird, but it anchors them. So I just say thumbs up, thumbs up, and, they, and then try to get them to do that. And I know eventually they can use their finger or whatever, or a pick, but for now I want them to just think about thumb. So. Anyway, if you have any great ideas about that, I'd love to, to hear them because I keep seeing kids do this and I feel like that's just going to make things hard and mess up their hold of the ukulele later. So, um, okay. So we strum down, we strum up, we strum alternating. And then I say, let's do a pattern. Let's do a pattern. Hmm, what's a pattern you might know? I know. How about this? Will you be my friend? And almost all the kids are like, <gasps> Because that is the pattern we use on bass xylophones. Will you 
be my friend with mallets in her hands. They know it, they've done it a lot of times um, as an accompaniment pattern on the bass style when it's a Bordeaux. So we do that same thing. I say, when you do, will you be my friend? Here, you're gonna do down, 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 up, down. And I slow that down and we do that together. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. And they, we do that for a little while. And they're like, oh, you know, so successful. I say, great, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rent out Mercedes-Benz Stadium because we can like go on the road. We're so good, we can strum up and down, woohoo. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. So then I say, okay, well, now we need to learn our first chord. And um, so stop playing and hold out your ukulele like this. So they're all sitting holding their ukulele like this. And then I switch the screen and I say, I want your uke to sort of look like the one on the screen. Now look, if you hold it out, you'll see that the ukulele up there sort of, it matches. And if you look at this, this is sort of a zoomed in view of this part of the ukulele. And if you see, you've got this line right here called the nut and you've got your double dark line there. And you've got one, two, three, four strings going up and down. You've got one, two, three, four lines going up and down. And then you've got those horizontal lines underneath the dark line. That's sort where of it matches the metal right here, right? And so I, I have them hold out their uke so they can see how the chord matches this. And I say, if you look all the way on the right, one, two, three frets down. We talked a little bit about frets starting. Three frets down, there's a blue dot. And look, on your ukulele, there's a blue dot. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I've added, these are just really simple um, little um, dots. These are, you can buy them on Amazon. In fact, I think they're on uh, the Amazon page that I made, but um, they're just simple little colorful dots and um, you can buy them really, really cheap and they just go right on your ukulele. I have a bunch of different colors. Probably people do a whole different kind of way. I mean, everyone does their own thing, but um, I start with blue for C and this shows you just where you put your fingers when you're playing chords. So this first one we do C and you know, if they're holding it like that, I say you can't press like that and still play. You still have to get it back to where it's comfortable next to your body when you play. So I say, so bring your ukulele back down. And now if you're gonna look at your ukulele, you've gotta find a way to play that blue dot. I've been going like this the whole time. I say, you know what? I've been deceiving you. I've been playing backwards this whole time. Watch. Does it look backwards now? And all, all their necks are pointing that way, all of the ukulele necks. And I say, yeah, but if I turn around, See, now I'm just like you, facing the same direction. My ukulele is the right way, but if I turn back around, they're like, oh, no, you've deceived us. But I say, I've got to change back to the, the right way to, to hold it now. I've been doing it the other way just to help you out, to mirror you, but now I have to hold it the right way. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to play the chord the correct way. So I'm just gonna play it the correct way, but um, don't let this mess you up. So I, I think talking about that with them is helpful, but I don't know, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on whether, whether you mirror first just for strumming or not. But um, I do the strumming first just to get that out of the way so that now when we add chords, I don't have to think so much about the strumming part. But um, I mirror them during the strumming and I don't now for playing chords. Anyway, back to C. So I say when we're playing C, the first thing I want you to do is put your first finger on the lowest string, the string closest to the ground in the, the first fret. And that's the place that's between the nut and the first line. So you're gonna put your first finger on the first fret, your second finger in the second fret, and your third finger in the third fret. That means you should land on the blue dot. That third finger should land on the, the blue dot. And your fourth finger doesn't go anywhere. It's gonna take a break. It's gonna have a little coffee break. So um, you're, you've got finger one, two, three, pressed down nice and tight, and you should hear this. That is a C chord. So when you press down nice and tight, your, your fingers are on the string, and you press down nice and tight, when you strum, you should hear a C. Try it. So this is when I let them do it, and I sort of quickly run around and check on all the kids. You know, there are some problems, some good things, and I say, great, you know, I move things around. Sometimes I move fingers around. Um, I, find, I found a lot of kids will put their finger on the wood, and the string will not even be under it. So I, you know, I move their finger over. I say, gotta press down. So a couple things I've done to try and get kids to keep their fingers on the strings in the right places. The first thing I'll say is, if you're doing a really good job, you're pressing down nice and tight with the, your finger on the top of the string, 
you should see lines on your finger when you pull your hand off. That's normal because there leaves an indention on your finger. And so that's something we look for. The other thing is, um, you know, you want to keep your finger right on top of the string. Hmm, how could we do? let's play a game. And so I have them flip the ukulele flat in their lap and I say, we're going to play a spider game. You need to have your fingers up here like spider's feet and your spider's going to walk along the web and the strings of the web and you're going to try and walk all the way from the head to the body. But you want to do that without touching the metal parts. So you're going to walk just so it's on each fret on the wood and you're going to land on the strings because spiders can't walk in air. They have to walk on their web all the way from the neck to the body and back. And so that gets them like right on the top of the strings, right? So I give them about 30 seconds to do that. Great, level two, you flip up. Now you have to reach under and do the same game all the way from the, neck, the head to the body and back. But you can only touch one piece of web at a time, so one string at a time. And you can't touch the metal parts. You have to be right in the middle of the fret. And for some reason, Ever after this, I can say spider fingers, and instead of having flat fingers, their fingers curl around like that. I also say sometimes monster claw, that you, you know, you monster claw onto the thing and that gets them to go straight down. Um, so I know some people are like, put a bubble in your hand. That's what my piano teacher always said. But like, that visual doesn't work for me. <laughs> so for some reason, spider fingers makes more sense in my head and also the, the claw, kids like that. So, um, so anyway, we get back, we play C. Um, we're trying to work out C. We do, will you be my friend? Just playing C. Um, and that's sort of where the first lesson ends um, because that's really as far as we can get in that one day. And that's a lot to cover in one day for them. My classes are only 45 minutes. Um, so that's a, sort of a lot to do. And then we talk about how to put the ukulele back on the rack. Um, and we do all of that. In the next lesson, in the second lesson, and I know I'm sort of running out of time here, in the second lesson we tackle another chord, um, and that's F. So F, I have, I have two different colors. I know probably maybe other people don't, but the reason I have this is so that um, you can put your first finger on the red and your second finger on the yellow. And instead, because this is the first one where you use two fingers for me, because I start out with C, which is just one, one finger. Oh, and by the end of that first lesson, we drop off the first two fingers and just do the third on the blue dot. But I feel like if I say one, two, three, and then go just three after we've gotten to do one, two, three, it'll avoid kids doing their first finger on that blue dot. I hope that makes sense why I would do one, two, three, first, second, third fret, and then eventually drop out the first and second instead of just saying third finger on the blue dot because... I don't know, I feel like kids would do that as well. You know, they'd, they'd go for other fingers, but um, one, two, three, and then take away. But on, on the next chord, F, I have a red dot and yellow dot so that they can um, easily find that. And the other nice thing is that then I also have green dots on here so that when it's time for G7, they can leave their first finger on the red and do two, three on the green, um, and then you can have G7. And, and maybe that would help that your first finger stays on red instead of saying, you know, green, green, green or whatever. But I, I think that maybe the colors are going to help. I, again, I don't know. This is the first year I've done this. So this may be a terrible idea. Who knows? But um, anyway, the, the dots have really helped. The first couple days, I didn't have the dots. They had not come in from Amazon and it was not as good. Once I had the dots, it was like, bam, they've got it. And eventually the dots hopefully will stop being a crutch and we can take that away. But for now, I am absolutely fine with the dots being there because otherwise it's, it's a lot for fourth and fifth grade minds to try and handle. Um, so um, I'm happy to take a closer up picture of this, but I'll see if, I don't know if that will help, but those are the dots and I can and put a link to that. Um, but in the first couple lessons, we do um, C chord for the first time, then F, and then what we apply that, um, I have a song we know, Chicken on a Fence Post. It's a song we've already done. And we talk about switching chords from C to F in that. And then there's a play along online. Let's see if I can pull this up. Ooh, nope. Okay, let's see if I can pull this up in the right place. Yeah, Best Day of My Life, American um, Authors. And um, this is a play along. This is on Dr. Jill Reese on her YouTube channel. And um, it, it tunes the song down to C. And basically, it's a simplified version with a C and an F chord. And they love playing along with it. And I love when they play along with it because it really forces them to figure out how to change chords 
quicker because they have to try and match the song. And as they're doing that, I can walk around and individually assess and individually help kids as they're playing. And the whole class is like super engaged. So I love this play along. I think it's great. It's a great channel. And I'll, I'll make sure I put that in the links for the show or for the whatever this is, this video. Um, but that's basically as far as, I'm only two lessons in, so I'm still working on it, but I wanted to share just a couple of those procedure things, things that have worked um, for me. There are a couple, there's maybe one other thing. Uh, oh yeah, I'm, one of the things I'm struggling with is a lot of kids will bring the ukulele out here or do other things, and I'm trying to get them to tuck it in, and I just haven't found a phrase or anything that's gotten them to put it in the right position. So if you have ideas about that, I would love to hear your thoughts because I have so many kids who like I get there and they're like doing this, you know, and for some reason it keeps moving further from them and I just want them to like tuck it in and look and lean over so they can see the fretboard but still have it in place. Um, and a lot of kids it's moving or coming up or whatever. I, I can deal with this, um, you know, the kids who flatten it out so they can see better. I just say, great, you got your fingers there. Okay, now flip it up and try. And that works for them. But the, the other kids, it just keeps wandering off. I don't know how that happens, but if you can get, if, share your ideas on how you get them to put it in the right place. Um, let me check through questions here and see. Um, okay. Oh gosh, there are a lot of great things. Um, okay. Okay. Bulletin boards. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, Michelle asked, I don't see the link to enter the decibels contest on the blog, makemomentsmatter.org slash giveaway. I'll put that in the link for the Make uh, Musical Mondays recap video page. Um, <clears throat> oh, somebody, I think, actually put that link there. Awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, I use my classroom door for a bulletin board. Y'all had a lot of great things to say about bulletin boards. That's great. <laughs> I love bulletin boards. Um, let's see. Uh, Makala ukuleles, love my hug strap. Kathy, I'm so glad you love um, the, the hug strap. It's a great one. And Becky says that she has the Eno, Eno tuner. Woohoo, I'm glad it's not just me. I, I feel like everybody is snark brand and yes. And Debbie says that her snark broke on the rotator part. Yes, mine did that too. And I had to pop it in, it was a pain in the butt. So um, I don't know, I, I think I feel like the Eno does, it's not gonna do that. It's gonna swivel a little differently. Um, Let's see. Oh yeah, someone else said they start with their kids using their thumb. I don't start with picks. I don't because, I mean, a lot of us we just you can use your thumb. I don't start with picks. And I know, kids are like, where's my where's my hug strap? I'm like, you don't need it because you're sitting down the whole time. You only need a strap if you're gonna move and you're not gonna move. So, um, <laughs> let's see. Um, oh, you only use a pick if you're in the recess ukulele club. That's cool. Um, so it's sort of like an incentive for them to join your ukulele club. Um, let's see. Somebody bought their Luna Ukes through Amazon. Cool, I'm gonna look back at that. Um, think pointer fingers with thumb resting near first knuckle close. I'm seeing some really great things on here about how to hold and really great tips about ukulele. So I appreciate that. I know um, I, t I posted about ukulele in the, so my blog has the Facebook page, David Route Make Moments Matter. There's a group called Every, Every Moment Matters, um, a music education community. And I posted in that a few days ago and got really great tips. So if you're not a part of that Facebook group, um, there's a link to that in the, the show recap and you can join that group if you want. Um, but it's, it's just really a, a community of people talking about what works and what doesn't. And um, it's not just a like, need your best tips on, you know, need your best songs, have an administrator coming in or whatever. It's not that. It's, it's um, you know, how can we help each other and how can we share and uh, what are you teaching this week and cool stuff like that. So if you want some of those tips, check out that group and you can just join that. Every Moment Matters, a music education community. Um, I'm going to stop the live video and just go through a bunch of these comments and ideas and write notes for myself for the rest of next week. 
Um, but I hope that you continue to keep adding comments and questions. Um, I don't see a ton of questions of well, how do you do this or how do you do this, which is great because I'm brand new. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the right way to do it. Um, but I really do appreciate all of you giving your great feedback and your ideas. Um, and like I said, as always, I always go back to these videos and I try and answer comments and things as they come in throughout the week or later. And so if you have those questions, leave them on the video or email me at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com and I'll give you my best guess. But like I said, I'm new to this, so it's a guess. Um, I hope this was helpful and I hope it gave you at least some ideas or it gave a view into a little bit of my process or why I process through this way. Um, like I said, I, I might change things for next year. I don't know. But um, I really am excited to look through your comments and your ideas. Um, and I appreciate you joining me tonight. Um, or if you're watching this replay later, I appreciate you taking the time for that. Um, have a great week. Check on that um, the video replay page so that you can get all those links and things that I talked about throughout the video. And that's at makemomentsmatter.org slash musicalmondaysrecap. Um, thanks so much, everyone. Have a great week.